Don't be so judgmental on my beard. I love All right. We are live. Welcome to episode 131 of the Beastly Thought Show. 130 or 131? 131. 131. Oh, 131. oh my God. The title right no now. one knows. Oh. <laughs> I got a lot to talk about. I can't wait to see what you guys have been playing all week. Uh, I'm really excited for that segment this week uh, because I've been playing Titanfall and I really want to talk about it. Uh, Robbie, you, you played that last week. Uh, I know you've been p playing Call of Duty this week. Yep. Why don't we start off with Beastly Gamer this week? What, what have you been playing, Beastly? All right. So this week, I really didn't get a chance to play too much of the traditional games that I play. For a majority of the time, I've been on VR, man. It's still a new experience. It's really exciting. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit more effort than just turning on your console with a controller. You got to get up. You got to go to the cabinet, get your headset out, plug shit up. But once you're in, you're in. So I've been playing a little bit of VR. Uh, I've been playing uh, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, which is really an incredible game. It might be my favorite game on the PSVR at this point. It just controls really well. Uh, the presentation is beautiful. It moves really well. It's very smooth. I never get any of that latency or any of that, um, you know, that feeling of being sick and feeling like my equilibrium is off playing that. I uh, also played um, Batman VR, which is a, a game we talked about during the pre-show, which is one that's liked by many and disliked by, I guess, just as many uh, gamers. And for me, it was it was really a mixed bag. I enjoyed the feeling of being Batman I think that the game looked beautiful. Uh, the aspects of the game that they really pushed forward are the detective aspect of Batman's work, uh, going out into the world, finding out what's happened to your friends and your allies and uh, interrogating people. And it's really a lot of detective work. There really isn't any fighting. You know, there's one pure, right. there's no fighting in this. Yeah. So that's the thing that really kind of left me underwhelmed that you got these batarangs. They work so flawlessly. You can throw them anywhere you want. You know, you can pull out all these gadgets and use them, but there's really no one to use it on. Uh, and another game that I played... It's so much potential, right? Yeah. Honestly, like, I, I played it, I played it, I think I played it for a half hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, and I fell off right off the bat because, wait a minute, I can't walk around as Batman. Like, there's a couple of cool things that you can do, right? right? Like, you see yourself as Batman in a mirror, mm -hmm. and that's dope. And you, like you said, you can throw these batarangs around, and that's fun as that hell. That does sound dope. Yeah, but all you end up doing with these batarangs is like throwing them or, like to like trigger things. Yeah, you like, get you get so throw lame. them and open boxes with them. If you see an item that yeah. you out in the distance, you can use your grappling hook to grapple it towards you. There's a few aspects of it that's really engaging. But the part of being Batman that people like the most is that adversarial combat and being able to deal with enemies on that level as well as the I guess detective aspect of what he does. But this game focus primary it focuses primarily on the detective aspect of it. I would have much rather yeah. I would have preferred being able to walk around, you know, uh yeah. and being able to <laughs> you can't really walk you can take two or three steps in different directions. There's one scene where you're I'm not going to spoil this game. It's only about two hours long. I beat it earlier today. Uh, what is it like twenty or thirty dollars? It's twenty bucks, yeah. And and so at the end of the game, you know, my wife, I took off the headset and I'm sweating because whenever you're playing this thing, you're sweating like a long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. But oh, I took yeah. it off and I looked over at Kate and she's like, that's it. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why it ended the way it did. Just when things started to really get interesting and the whole psychological drama, of what's going on inside Bruce Wayne's head becomes evident mm -hmm. to you, the player, because you you embody Bruce Wayne and Batman in this game. Once it hits you, what's really starting to happen, the credits roll. And that was like unacceptable, unacceptable. Yeah. It was very frustrating. But for what they've done and what they've given the gamer for $20, it is a pretty interesting and engaging piece of content. Now, if it was a four- I didn't think it was engaging at all. I'm not a huge Batman fan. I am. So like that 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 may be the difference, right? It was like it was cool, like I said, to see myself dressed in a Batman costume in like you know a virtual mirror. Other than that, like I don't really care about Batman. I, I like some of the movies. I don't like some of the other ones. I don't read the comics. I need to know which movies you I, like and which ones you don't. I like the the new three, like the and honestly, the I really like Michael Keaton. The first two of those three. Yes. No. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Christian Bale. Yeah, the Christian Bale ones. Okay, Batman. Dark Knight trilogy. I didn't really like the Dark Knight Returns or Dark Knight whatever. Uh, yeah. One of that trilogy. I didn't think that was a good movie at all, but the first two of them, especially the middle one, was oh, fantastic. Yeah. Dark, the, just the first Dark Knight, I love that movie. 
Yeah. You know, but Brian, I, if people our age, we gotta give a little bit of love to Michael Keaton, man. He made it he made it fashionable to be a superhero on the big screen. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. It's really, really awesome. But I do get your point. A lot of people are gonna think this is not engaging, but for me, there are certain aspects of being in a virtual reality existence that really supersede what we normally see on TV. Take for instance the films. Let's go back to the 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 original with Michael Keaton, the aspect of the film that showed him as a child behind his mother and father in the alleyway when they get murdered in front of him. When you're, yeah. you're playing Batman Arkham VR, you're actually there. You are a child. You're standing up, and your mother and father are in front of you, and they're these towering people. And it, I'm a big guy, okay? But my mom was a big ass woman, her ass is in my face, and my father was standing next what? to her. And and that's uh, you're a child. You're, I didn't you're short. to know that. Yeah, well, you know that's what you see as an adult. That's what men look at. But anyway, nice ass too. But anyway, uh, this whole situation played out that has played out in the films, you know, time and time again, where. They're in this alley, uh, and they're going someplace, and some guy comes out, robs them, and kills them. And it happens right in front of you. And when it happens in front of you, and you're actually there, and then you look at this guy, and this guy threatens you, and he's right in your face, it's it's a whole feeling that you really can't embody by watching a regular film. And I think that's what makes VR so engaging and exciting for me, just the mm-hmm. applications that could arise from it if someone implements it properly. I think I, like I would have looked favorably on this if it was included in that demo did. In the VR world's disc or something gotcha. like that. But the fact mm. that they were, they're were they selling this as a $20 product, to me, it doesn't feel complete. It doesn't feel like a fucking game, to be honest with you. It feels like a, Ouch. you know, like a, a standing really cool simulator. Tech demo. <laughs> standing <laughs> simulator You're right. 2016. It, it, you know who said something Batman very edition. similar? I, I got a video coming out this week. Um, but Phil Spencer, he was asked uh, uh, in a and a what he thought about Xbox One and what the future of VR is for Xbox. And... He basically, he summed it up. He said, right now, VR is a bunch of demos and tech demos, Mm -hmm. and none of them really feel like self-contained, true gaming experiences. And he's willing to wait until developers are able to get it right. Yeah, they will, too, assuming that the adoption of the headsets actually increases to a rate where it makes it worth it, right? Like, are we ever going to see a AAA title come out for VR only? Well, that only, that depends on how many of these things can sell right off the bat, and that Depends on how good the experiences are right now. You know, and I don't think Batman sells me on VR at all. There's some other experiences that I'm very yeah, yeah. excited about, but that game to me was very disappointing. Especially, it got a lot of hype. It yeah, did. It, it, yeah, it, it, it was like the marquee title for PSVR. It seemed like the one that people were talking about, and then it was just kind of, hmm, depends on who you are and if you like it or not. I mean, there's certain aspects of it that really are amazing. There's an aspect where you're investigating a murder. Not going to spoil anything, but you're there in this crazy little alley setup. And of course, you do teleport from spot to spot to get different angles and vantage points on what actually happened to this person. But you're able to fast forward and rewind time and see this whole <sighs> altercation take place in a way that we've never been able to do before. And to me, that kind of stuff is really sick and exciting. You know, I was saying it out loud during the, the, my playthrough. I was like, this is fucking unbelievable that it looks this good, it plays this well. It does I would have look preferred good. to. I would have much preferred them to have, you know, tactile control movement where you can walk around and you've got, you know, certain areas you can go to and do investigations versus this click forward, teleport, click forward, teleport. And it kind of takes you out of the whole element of the game. It it, it takes away from it. So there's a but, problem with the move controllers. And I, I think that game, you know, that is a game that might address it is or doesn't address it is that. If you are using the move controllers, which is great because you, you can move, you know, you can manipulate things around you. You don't have the ability to move your computer, your your person, right? There's, there are no thumbsticks on these things. There are no, you know, like there's no way to move your person, you know, like your, your avatar. And uh, like, I'd really like to see a new version of the move controller come out that has a couple of thumbsticks. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, like a thumbstick on each put some, side. Put some analogs on it, yeah. That'd yeah. be incredible. Yeah, and then you can... Because then you could use the analog sticks to do things like player movement or to manipulate, you know, small things. Even if you flip them around, you know, you can, you know, do whatever. But the way it is now, these things are basically only useful as, like, very rudimentary tools. Yeah, well, when the PlayStation Move controllers first came out, they weren't... They weren't intended for you to have a move controller in each hand. It was the. No, there was a. It was like a 
controller yeah. moved type stick and a move controller yeah. that we see nowadays. And that one had all the controls and the analog on but that it. That one didn't have uh, a ball on it. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah. Didn't have the glowing dildo. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta play with the balls. But another game that just came out, um Jesus. Uh, in, in, in demo form that I actually played last night, and I was truly surprised because I thought it was much better than Eve um Eve Valker. I'm sorry, uh, say that. what 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 game? The Call of Duty VR demo. Oh, okay. I haven't played that yet. Ooh. It really, really, really is incredible, and it's better than Eve Valkyrie uh, as far as the way it looks and the way it controls, and, and the, the amount first of stuff. You said that to me. I'm not. No. Damn it! I want to be first, Briar. Well, <laughs> just pretend like I'm first. But okay. I, I can't believe first. it, Beastly. <laughs> Eve Valkyrie is my favorite game on VR right now. <laughs> yes, I knew I'd be first, but um, I played it, and it really. Some of these games, like I let my pregnant wife play it, and she had, she ended up taking off the headset because you know she's seven months pregnant and her, her hormones are out of whack and Rolled she's pissed already. off at the world. <laughs> that wouldn't be yeah. good, yeah. For pregnant so wife she she was playing in space, and I played through this entire demonstration, which to me was pretty epic. You're over a planet. I don't know if it's Earth or not, but you're, it looks like Earth. And there's this crazy space war that begins to happen, and you got to go to basically these little nodes and. Uh, and pretty much you go to these nodes and, and leave like beacons. And then after you leave the beacons, you destroy a little bit of trash that's flying through space. You lock onto these bigger pieces of trash and then all hell breaks loose. And these ships come in and teleport very similar to the way they did in E Valkyrie. But the control feels a lot better. It feels much more in tune with what we're used to playing with in traditional first person shooters or even simulator type games. So to me, E Valkyrie's controls was a little weird. I've only played the demo. It kind of turned me off a little bit. But playing this Call of Duty in space uh, in this VR mode, it really, really felt good. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it. I don't know if that's just the one off from the do you Infinite have to Warfare. buy Call of Duty to, to get that demo? No, you don't. Nope. It's, I you downloaded download it off the PlayStation Store yeah, for I free. Think it's two, two, two and a half gigs, three gigs, something like that. Still but you know, I, really I that. played it. And I enjoyed it. You know, there's a lot of free stuff that you, that you can download from the PlayStation Store right. just to see on your VR. I saw a Japanese animated cartoon give a fucking concert. And I looked around me and everybody in the audience was shaking their move ones. I started shaking mine too. <laughs> yeah. It, just started flying around. it was great. Yeah. VR is, it's an acquired taste. Uh, like I told you guys during the pre-show, and I don't know how you guys feel in the audience, but my wife, she is pregnant. That's the caveat. She said she's she's enjoying it less and less, and she feels that the jump into virtual reality wasn't as needed as a lot of people think. She said she's totally fine with playing games on flat screens, you know, these hyper, super crisp 4K or 1080p resolution screens. And some people, like myself, really enjoy getting into the game and experiencing it that way. Yeah. Uh, perfect example, Drive Club VR. Yeah, I'm not a drive driving fan. I hate driving Sims. You won't catch me doing it unless it's Mario Kart. That's about the only one I really play and enjoy. But getting into the car in Drive Club VR and looking at the innards of the car and the seat and the floor where your feet are and all this stuff and actually feeling like you're compartmentalized inside of a real vehicle and, and taking to the road is so much better than just watching it on the screen. And I guess some yeah. games are able to capture that magic a little bit better than others. The thing that I'm really excited about with VR is seeing what happens within the next year, two years, once developers start to really fine-tune how to accept this new technology and make it work best for them, and more so, better best for the gamer, because a lot of people have an issues with VR. Once they get that frame rate right and get it to the point where people can see everything and not feel that feeling of, oh, God, I'm going to throw up. i, I got to take this thing off. i got a headache. Once they can kind of minimize that, I think it'll be better for everybody. Did you check and out that, was that my... Playroom demo with the... Yeah! Isn't that good? Oh, man. Okay, so <laughs> this, this is what the Playroom uh, demo is. If you guys have a PlayStation camera, then you probably know what Playroom is. It's um, where you basically go in there and you can goof around and knock robots around with your hands and stuff. But they've added the Playroom VR demo. And I don't even know if it's a demo. I think it's a full type of experience. But imagine like a Mario 64 or Mario 3D World type of experience that you're sitting in, when you look at your shadow, you're a giant robot. And you're controlling this little miniature robot who's running around doing these things the same way you would in a traditional third-person adventure game. And it looks beautiful. Briar, it looks really good. It does look I really did not, good. Yeah. I did not think that it would look that good 
when I first put it on, I, I screamed or called my daughters in. I said, you got to see this. And of course, Nova didn't want to take it off. But it's, I was really impressed with it. And things mm-hmm. like that, to me, that's the shining beacon of hope of what we can possibly expect in the future from VR once developers really get a, get a handle on what this new tech is, is capable of doing. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that in the future we're going to have uh, very immersive experiences, like full games that are based on the, the kind of tech we <clears> saw <throat> in the London heist. Uh, more fleshed out games like EVE Online that has a full campaign as well as multiplayer. I'd love to see a game like Titanfall 2 have a VR version, you know, like, so like, you know, when you buy Titanfall 2, you can play it in VR or Destiny or, or Call of Duty. Like, I hope they can figure out the first person, person shooter motion sickness thing. I think like a game like Riggs has figured it out. So it's, it's a doable thing, you know, like. Like we're, we're, let me, let me, we'll let, get let me make a comment on that. We talked about it last week. I know that you said you played Riggs and had no issue. I played Riggs three times, had an issue with it once. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't know what the deal is. It's not like I, I crossed my eyes on the time that I, that I had issues with it. I played it this, the way I normally do. And I guess that sometimes when you, you go through the virtual movement of actually feeling like you're there, it does something to your equilibrium. But my only thing is I told my wife. The more you you exercise a muscle, the better you get at doing something. Yeah. And I think that this is something that's so new. We've never really experienced it before. We've been living on the earth for untold you know, decades. And now we finally are trying something completely new. Our brain's trying to figure out how to react to it. And I think the more that we do it, the better off we'll be. But even, um, God, what is it? Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. There are certain aspects of that game. Once you go through it, you start to feel a little bit of that sensation of you coming out of your seat and maybe – you're feeling a little off, just a little yeah. bit, but then it, it slowly comes back to you. That's the game I probably played the most. I, it, undoubtedly, it's the game I played more than any other VR game, and it is the game that has given me the least amount of issues. I mean, and it's it's amazing. Do you have that game, Brian? Yeah, yeah, I played it live on stream. It was a lot of fun. It's, there are a couple it's, of good scares in there, but it's not really yeah, a scary not game. Not like most yeah, of it's a horror game. shooting. Yeah, not jump scares really. But I enjoyed like my I playthrough. I mean, for. How much is that game? Is that I think I paid forty or fifty for that. I think it's a forty dollar game. Yeah, forty dollars. So I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool, it. it's a cool demo. Frankly, forty dollars. At least you pl- feel like you're playing a video game. You know, <laughs> like it's an on rail yeah. shooter. Let's be real here. But there's a, you know, it's fun. It's fun using the guns. I wish they would. For some reason, that gu- game makes me hold the controller like this to fire the gun, <laughs> which is uncomfortable. Yeah. Whereas the one heist it. lets me hold the controller like this and feel like I'm firing a gun. It is. It's bizarre. Mm. I wish they would fix that about that game. Uh, but it is. It's it's exciting. There are a couple of jump scares in there. I, I thought it was pretty it, 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 And it feels very similar to the original uh, Until uh, until Dawn Retro. I mean, the original game. Uh, if you guys haven't played it, once you play through the original game, there are aspects and cutscenes that happen after you beat a chapter where you're in this old mental facility talking to this doctor and as you progress through the game he gets more and more beat up and bloodied by the end of the game and then you realize exactly well, i'm not going to spoil anything you realize what happens by the end of the game and something very similar is going on in until dawn rush of blood too so it really ties in very well it's a different kind of experience but there are things that are happening to your body and happening to you mentally that are causing you to actually be on the ride of your life yeah. and by the end of it the story revealed itself so that's the only real game that I've played so far, if you ask me, everything else, even buying Batman uh, Arkham VR, it doesn't feel like it doesn't that's not feel like a game. A, that's a that's a demo. It should have it, it should have been free, if you ask me. It, it doesn't feel like a real game. Uh, it was a twenty dollars experience. It lasted for two hours. There's very limited stuff that you could do. Uh, of course, when you look in the mirror, you see yourself as Batman. It is pretty damn bad. You guys know I was jamming. And, <laughs> I mean, and there's there's certain aspects <laughs> of the game that are really really enticing, but calling it a full fledged game is kind of a joke because just when the game starts to get interesting and it makes you wonder and you have questions wow okay this is going on and then the credits were like what the hell just happened what is this a joke yeah. and that's that's been my week i'm sorry it took so long to explain it no oh problem. it's all good I'm glad to hear it uh robbie what have you been playing um so this week i have been playing more of titanfall 2 because i think we've summarized already it has a fantastic campaign i think it was just oh, really man. fun to play i through. played through like most of it today on stream and i i loved it there's so many yeah there's so many twists to the gameplay uh that just you know they they use them up for about a half hour 
and then they, and they drop them and they move new. on to something completely different. And it's it's like whoa, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. That and the multiplayer is awesome. But uh, mainly this week, what I've also been playing is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare because that just came out on Friday. Yeah, and of course, I have a lot to say about it. So I'm gonna start first with the campaign because I think that's actually what a lot of people have been looking boom, forward boom, to. Boom, boom, boom! Stop hitting your damn mic. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, it's a habit. I'm just tapping the desk. But uh, the campaign is amazing. I'm gonna say that right now. They nailed this. It is so much fun, and I think this is a step forward for Call of Duty. And it is awesome. So basically what happens is you play as Lieutenant Reyes. He's sort of like a commander-in-chief. And then uh, basically what happens is the captain dies, and so you're commanding this ship known as the UNSA Retribution. And it's amazing. It's really cool. You go across all these different planets. You go to Earth, to Mars, to Venus, to Saturn. You get to go to all the different oh, wow. moons and things like that. And the coolest part is that when you launch into a mission, so say you want to go to a mission on uh, Titan, like Saturn's moon, you can just go there, you launch your ship. It's really awesome. Uh, so there's like main missions and there's also these side missions that you can do, which are sort of like the main missions, but it's more just like you attack a ship and you have to assassinate someone. There's like these stealth missions you do. Then there's also missions where you play in the Jackal and the space combat is badass, man. There's like these You're little fighter ship. ships. You have to zoom around and shoot the fighter ships and stuff like that. And then there's, like, these battleships you have to take out. I mean, they nailed this setting. And the game was just so much fun. And the best part about it is that there's different mission structures. So the game never feels too repetitive. You're always doing something different. And I think another thing I love about the game, too, is the performances. There are some really cool characters in this game. And there will definitely be some genuinely surprising moments. Like, I think this is... One of the best Call of Duty campaigns. This game is wow. on my very short list to buy. Um, and for, surprisingly, it's because of the single player campaign and they because of it, COD 4. Like, I really want to get yeah. COD 4. But yeah. um, I've watched a bit of the campaign. I want to I want to stay away from it until from now until I actually play it. Because from what I saw, it looks very exciting. I like those side missions, how they reward you with like, so new much bits fun. of equipment that you can use. Upgrade your ship too. Uh, yeah, yeah, the shooting that. looked really fun. The settings for the shooting. I mean, like there was one part where you fly into an asteroid, and you, it, you realize this asteroid is getting sent to the sun at like mock speed. Yeah, and it's like nine hundred degrees on the surface of the asteroid. So like it really plays into the gameplay as well. Like the story looks fun. It looks interesting. Then I saw some flight stuff, and the flying mechanics look simplistic. But they're so fun, man. Well, the space like combat, fun, right? It's not is amazing. It's not yeah. like a VR sim. Or it's not a simulator of space combat. It's an arcadey version of it, similar to you know, like the difference between Falcon 4.0 and Afterburner, right? Yeah, Afterburner's a lot of fun, though. <laughs> you know, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so now so, tell me about the multiplayer a little. So. Multiplayer, I'd probably say, is the weakest part of this game. I will say I do actually enjoy the multiplayer. It's basically an Infinity Ward-style Call of Duty with Black Ops 3's movement system, right? Like, you have the rigs, which are the different characters. You have all their different weapons and abilities and all that. If you've played Black Ops 3, pretty much the exact same setup here, except the gameplay feels different because this is an Infinity Ward Call of Duty. Uh, I really enjoy it. I do. I think the maps are good. I think there are a couple new modes. Defender, in particular, I love that mode. It's where you have to control this little satellite ball. You have to keep it away from the other team to score points. I thought that was really fun. There are definitely some issues, though, man. Like, I'll tell you, the spawns are absolutely horrible in this game. There have oh. been some matches I've jumped in. It doesn't matter what game mode it is. I take, like, two steps forward, and I'm shot in the back. I take another couple steps, I'm shot on the left side. I take another couple steps, I'm shot on the right. Like, sometimes... It oh, will you just mean be just, spawn just like, trap just like city? The business, I just, huh? yeah, yeah, it'll be like spawn it's trap that. city. And after enough times of dying over and over, as soon as I spawn, I just quit. I'm like, you know, I'm done. So that is probably the worst part of the game for me is the spawns yeah. are absolutely horrible. But I've been, hearing, I've been hearing a lot of hate about the netcode too, which is surprising because Infinity Ward has usually nailed the netcode. No, the I'd say the netcode is spot on. Like the time to kill and the netcode, I never have an issue with the netcode. I always feel like my bullets are hitting. I always feel like I'm killing people. I definitely don't have a problem that's with good that. good to hear, deal. but that's not, the, that's not the overwhelming opinion, it seems. That's what I've heard, actually, and I'm surprised to hear that because... Yeah, that's, that's a real bummer because Infinity Ward games, like Call of Duty Ghost, had excellent netcode. The hit detection was... 
spot on 99% of the time. It could be because of the peer-to-peer -peer servers. I believe they're not running dedicated servers, so that's where there could be some issues. But, I mean, that's definitely not my biggest problem with the multiplayer. It just It's frustrating with the spawns and stuff like that. You play any COD 4? Yes, I have played COD 4. Right. I played through the entire campaign. It which looks was pretty damn good. from The, the multiplayer footage amazing. I've seen looks amazing. It looks like you remember it looking. Except it is, yeah. Like, if you actually went back and played it, you would... It would I can't like, believe how shitty this look looks. Anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, it would look absolutely horrible. It really does look good, and it it looks like it plays just like the game used to play. You know, like, it... I can't wait to get in there. It does feel pretty much exactly like Call of Duty 4. Yeah. They have changed, you know, the weapons a little bit. Like, some of the guns do sound differently and things like that. Yeah. But this is, at its core, a boots-on-the-ground Call of Duty. It's more slow. It's way more tactical, I'd say, than Infinite Warfare. You know, Infinite Warfare is all about That's movement what the and ordered, precise yeah. aiming and all of that. Whereas COD 4 is, you know, you kind of have to take cover behind, like, a hay bale or something. And then, yeah. you know, very carefully peek out. So, uh, they're very different style of games. But, I mean... You got you, they got you covered. This that year, game you want doesn't exist anymore. Though. That style of game doesn't really exist anymore. I can't think of a shooter that provides mm. that that tactical but arcadey form of you know Call of Duty branded combat. You know, yeah. like and this is it. This is COD Four at its core. Yeah, I would. I would. You know, I've I've talked a lot about how I don't like what was happened to modern or to Call of Duty. Right, their multiplayer at some point, right around, right around Advanced Warfare, just kind of like, okay, this is no longer what I like out of Call of Duty, right? Yeah. But getting this old COD Four back, man, that hits me right in that nostalgia bone. I love that game, and I can't wait to play this. You, we had a conversation before the podcast started that you you couldn't possibly recommend paying eighty dollars just to get COD Four. But that's what I'm yeah. doing, Robbie. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna really? play. I'm gonna play the wow. single player of Infinite Warfare, but I'm not really a single player guy. Like, I don't play a lot of single player games. It's not really yeah. what excites me. What's exciting to me about this package, and I wish I could buy it. If I could buy thirty dollars for just God Four, that's absolutely what I'd be doing right now. Everyone would do that. Yeah, Let's but be I am really excited to jump back into COD 4 because it's been a, it's one of my favorite games of all time, favorite multiplayer games of all time, and it's been unplayable for like the last six years. Yeah, like you just haven't back. been able to play it like in a, in its real state because it's yeah. been so hacked and so broken. So now that they brought it into the next generation and you know it's running on, it's not hacked, like I can't wait to play it, man. I can't wait. It's, it's really yeah. exciting. And, you know, if it's a game that I end up playing for a full year, like I have with the old Call of Duty games, $80 is a fucking bargain. Yeah. Maybe it will be worth it to you. Yeah. Just for me, well, like we were talking about that, but I don't personally feel like people should be buying this if they just want COD 4. If it's worth it to you, go ahead. But, you know, for the most part, I feel like that's a frustrating and unfair thing that Activision has done. And they will sell it separately, I guarantee you, at some point. Of course they will at some so point. So if you can, wait, I would say. People but like, is there going to be a player base still when that happens? Or are hmm. you going to have missed out? Yeah, yeah, that's the question. There's going to be a player base. It's COD there fucking 4. <laughs> COD 4 lasted for years now. Like, yeah, so, absolutely. For me, I've never played COD 4 before, ever. So yeah. this is, to it's me, so kind good. of... A, it's so fun. Yeah, I mean, I miss the old boots on the ground types of Call of Duties. I mean, I don't like being up in the air and everything, having a double jump. It's I so want to be able to go back in time and play some old school. Now, one thing that l depressed me a little bit is that the multiplayer still feels the same way it did in the beta. I buy Call of Duties primarily for the multiplayer. And when I played this beta, eh, I wasn't really impressed. Now, depending on what Mr. Rabbit says about the game that he'd been playing, the game that he was playing during the free show, I'm going to go ahead and bite the bullet on one of these choices. It's a uh, because hard the, year for to be a fan. There's so yeah. many good ones, man. I mean, yeah. The, yeah. the shooters right now are on point this year. Oh, yeah. They're killing it. Well, after after you talk to us about what you've been playing, Briar, uh, we just heard Robbie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a des decision on Call of Duty or Titanfall 2. Oh, can I uh, talk about one something real quick, too? too? Yeah. I'm not, not a Battlefield fan. Are you buying My Battlefield 1, Briar? Yeah. You are? Yeah, absolutely. You, are you going to put it next to Far Cry? 
Battlefield 1 is awesome. <laughs> Please play it, Brian. Don't let it sit there. Don't let it sit there. Put it in the console and play it. <laughs> Brian, so, go on. Be, be real with me now, Brian. Where is it going to go? Okay, right next time? let's let Robbie finish. When it's my turn to talk, I'll talk about that a little bit. So good. Uh, I was going to mention the last part of Infinite Warfare, of course, is Zombies in Space Land. That is awesome. Let me tell you right now, that is really cool. This is exactly what I wanted from Zombies because it's this crazy, like, just 80s filled inspired, like, theme park. It's really cool because there's all this, like, 80s references and things like that. And it's got all this style to it. You know, there's the four characters. There's, like, the jock, the nerd and all that. And there's, like, the girl and stuff. And it's really funny, especially every, like, five or six rounds, there will be these zombie clowns that run at you. And they make, like, these honking noises. <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. I can't even tell you guys. The first time I saw the zombie clowns running at you, like, I was laughing out loud. It is hilarious. It doesn't take itself seriously. It's still round based. Like, it definitely is very similar to Trayer Every... Zombies, but it's so fresh. It's really refreshing. I love that, too. I'm I just, just so damn that. tired of zombies at this point. I'm a I zombie too, but this is really I'm... different. This is fun. Spec Ops. I yes. wanted Spec Ops, not fucking zombies. Spec Ops was dope as shit, and we haven't seen it since Modern Warfare 3. Oh, yeah. Yep. Been, oh, wow. my God. That mode was so fun, and. Guys, nice has been play. done to death now. Every everybody's making zombies. I completely agree with you. Please give us a chance. I oh, was I, so there's, look, I don't zombies. like zombie give modes. Okay, look, it's oh, not any I'm fucking different again. than last year's zombies. It's, it it's got a different theme. That's all. I don't look. Okay. Beastly doesn't like battlefield games. I don't like zombies. Like, it's uh, if you don't like fucking celery, it doesn't matter how good this fucking celery is. I don't like fucking <laughs> celery. <laughs> I love. <laughs> I like, totally understand know, where you're coming. You know, like I was some people just aren't fans. zombies fans, and I'm one of them. Like, I just find that game mode to be repetitive and boring. Other people love it, and that's fine, man. Other <sighs> yeah. people, other people find multiplayer games to be repetitive and boring, and I, you know, I can't get enough of them. So, like, yeah. to each their own. But zombies, very man. valid. That, I, I, I got to give kudos to that analogy, though. That celery, what, that was what, awesome. what? <laughs> I, I do. I and Robbie, you got to kind of understand where he's coming from because, to be totally honest. This new zombie mode could have been a maps pack for for Black Ops Three, just in space. I feel like this whole it's game could same. have been a map pack for Black Ops Three. <laughs> Black Ops 3. <laughs> Less than fair, yeah, it kind of could be. It's got all of the same characters and movement. The yeah. campaign is very, very appealing, right? The campaign but the is the multiplayer way and the zombies modes look like they're just reskinned. Oh, uh, okay. I, still love zombies I, I, I gotta I agree. By. I stand by zombies, though. I was sick of zombies, too, but this is fun. But, yeah, I totally understand your, what you're getting at, Brer, and you have a very valid opinion on that. Fuck that Every like opinion that. I have is valid, Robbie. Get used to it. No, Deal you with have it. a good opinion, though. I respect <laughs> that. Like, absolutely. <laughs> Don't be a dick about it, though, okay? That's where I draw the uh, line. All right. <laughs> okay, it's taking all the fun out of it, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> don't be an asshole uh i've been playing uh so i hurt my back i don't know if you guys knew this i hurt my back on friday like have you ever had one of these where you don't know how you fucking hurt it you just wake up and you can't fucking move oh yeah i've I have had that even though i'm young i've had that what the fuck, sucks <laughs> anyhow so friday like you know everything's going well and i try and roll out of bed and no that's not happening <laughs> oh <laughs> So, like, like oh, what was most painful back. was actually sitting upright, and if I tried to put my hands together, like, any shoulder movement in my left shoulder was excruciating. It was, like, in the back, like, in my shoulder blades. It was terrible. So I couldn't play any video games moment. on Friday at all, and I was really bummed about it until I went downstairs and started playing with the Wii U because that wider controller... You know, I, my hands didn't have to be, like, right close together. They were, like, way out here. And I was able to play a little bit of Wii U. While you I, found a way to play the Wii U. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I found a way to like the Wii U. Yeah, so I ended up playing a little bit of <laughs> uh, Mario Maker, which I love that game. That game is phenomenal. I love that you can design your own levels. I love that you can, um, you know, play levels that other people have. I love the 100 Mario Challenge. I think, I think it's just really compelling, you know. Like, if you haven't checked out Mario Maker yet, this game is a year old at this point, but... It's a fun game. And then uh, I decided, okay, I've had enough of user-created levels. Now I want to play an actual Mario game. So I started playing Super Mario U, Super Mario Brothers U, which is like the 2D side-scrolling Super Mario that they put mm -hmm. out for the Wii U. And that's a fun game, man. It was a lot of fun just to 
goof around in there. I got through like the first two worlds. Uh, and it was fun to, you know, hook up my Wii U again, or play a little bit of Which Wii U again. We don't say very often. Yeah, so, yeah, no, no shit. Absolutely. Let, let's just let this be known. For people out there, you broke your back today. If you're in the Play hospital the and you, you got a stent and you, you just had surgery, Wii U the Wii U is use. for you. Yeah. yeah. It that worked. wide controller. That wide controller. And look, Briar is totally fine now. Uh, so totally then, fine. Uh, my back felt a lot better today, so I was able to uh, come back up to the office and put a, a, a regular controller in my hand. Uh, and I That's bought good. Titanfall last year, last week, but I just hadn't had a chance to play it. So I finally said, you know what? I think, and this I think I'm going to do moving forward is I'm going to start doing this on every Sunday. My stream time is going to be something besides Destiny, right? I'm going to it's going to be purposely something not Destiny, so that I have like a set time to play Titanfall two or Bla Battlefield one or COD four. You know, one of these newer games that's coming out. Or a game that I just yeah. never finished that's ancient that I just never got around to finishing. I'm going to just Parker make four. this my Sunday thing. Um, so today it was Titanfall 2. I played through most of the campaign. Uh, and I got a couple of single player matches in after I stopped streaming while I was just kind of getting set up for the show. You guys were watching me not pay attention yep. to what I was doing while I was... <laughs> <laughs> and was I got to say, like, man, like this, this game is to be... It's just fucking fun, man. The movement is fun. The single player campaign is incredible. Um, it's it's a short experience, but what they managed what, to what do is, what is short, bro? What is short? I think I played for four hours. I feel like I'm almost done with it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's four to five hours around there. What they've managed to do though is to actually make it a cohesive experience all the way through, but each like section of it it changes up the mechanics just enough to make it feel like a completely fresh experience while you're there. You're still, you know, you're still running around with a gun, you know, jumping in and out of a mech, but maybe you're like warping to different planes of existence, or, you know, maybe you've got to manipulate this world around you in some way. Like as you go through, it keeps changing up like how the game is played in very exciting ways. And I really like that about it. It just kind of keeps the gameplay fresh all the way through. And it's a campaign in Titanfall, which by itself, it's an exciting world to play in, you know? I really enjoy the campaign. Multiplayer, it feels to me like Titanfall. Like it's Titanfall's multiplayer, fleshed out with more options, more more Titans, more things to you know, collect. It still feels yep. like Titanfall, though. And Titanfall felt good. Wow. Yeah. So I'm really so excited about Titanfall. Have they? Can you give me anything notable that's been improved over the original Titanfall? Besides, of course, the the campaign. Well, Is there anything the, as far as gameplay? I haven't played enough of the uh, multiplayer yet to really start unlocking everything. But from what I understand, there's there's just more unlockables. There's more content in the multiplayer. The big problem with the multiplayer Titanfall One was you hit Gen One, which is like kind of like a prestiging system, and there was no real reason to keep going. Right, there was no, there was no further unlocks, right? For you know, a recovering cod addict, where I just like to kind of keep feeling that carrot on a stick as I keep going. You know, th this has that. It, you know, there's plenty of titans to unlock. There's plenty of weapons to unlock. There's plenty of upgrades for your for your pilot to unlock. There's all that stuff, uh, and then it you know it gets quicker and easier every time you rep up too. So. So, okay, after listening to that and listening to what Robbie had to say about Infinite Warfare and COD 4, I think I'm going to go ahead this weekend possibly and, and, and grab Titanfall 2. The reason I want to pick that one up first is because I didn't necessarily like Infinite Warfare that much. I know yeah. it has a, a nice single player. Uh, and I think that at some point down the line, COD 4 will become available. Yeah. And I, I also don't want to be super late to Titanfall like I was to Titanfall 1. I played yeah. Titanfall 1 like almost a year after it came out when I bought my Xbox. It sounds like a lot of fun. We could barely get you to talk to us pre-show. I was like, Briar, Briar, somebody, somebody <laughs> get like, him. Oh, shit, I just got killed from behind. I'm like, what are we talking about no, no. here? <laughs> See, we didn't know Briar was playing. You know, He has his monitor right there next to him. And we were all having a conversation. And I watched a scary movie earlier today. And Briar said, somebody's behind me. And I'm looking at his green screen like, what the fuck is he seeing? <laughs> what? Yeah. And he was like, no, your wife? 
Oh, <laughs> He's like, no, oh, it's Titanfall. I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, more than likely, I'll go ahead and pick this up and give it a shot. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'm hearing a lot of good things about it. Yeah, and I am hopefully- really excited to get into COD 4, though. Like, I love, I adore that game. But it is a 10-year-old game, let's be honest. Ten-year-old. It holds up very well, though, guys. I'll tell you. I mean, they nailed the remaster. Yeah, it's exactly as you want it and remember it. And they've made some additions, too, to make the game better. So I, I mean, totally I- let me ask you a question, Brad. I've heard you say it's a 10-year-old game a few times on the show already. Do you think that the fact that it's remastered tallies into that at all? Does that change the fact that it's a 10-year-old game if it looks like a modern game? I mean, the story hmm. of the campaign is just as good as, I guess, a story or a campaign of a game that's coming out now and recently released. Like, I'm sure that the campaign of COD 4 might be able to hold up to the campaign of Titanfall 2. And the fact that it's actually redone graphically and it's far it superior. It's a pretty great campaign. If you've never played it, I mean, that's that's yeah. something else right there. I mean, it, the sniper yeah, never level played. and parapet or parapet or whatever that is called is really. You forgot it. It's only been 10 years. Yeah, it's only been 10 years, and I forgot the name of that <laughs> Russian town. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's really compelling. It's a fun, it's a fun single player experience. And then the multiplayer, you know, popularized Call of Duty. Right? Like, classic. Yeah, it's an it, absolute classic. It is, it is COD 4. Yeah. It changed okay. multiplayer shooters. Like, that was such a huge deal at the time. It was ahead of right. its time. Yeah. I mean, it changed everything about shooters. Yeah. All right. So, we got a little bit of news. Uh, Robbie, would you like to get us started, sir? Yeah. So, first bit of news uh, this week definitely got me excited just because I uh, love the Tomb Raider franchise and I'm looking forward to this next one. So, the next entry in the Tomb Raider franchise has reportedly been outed this week thanks to a Reddit post. The game will be called Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So, is this like Lara Croft's Shadows game? or? Yeah, I don't know. And so, because I remember a while ago, Crystal... Dynamics, the developers who make the Tomb Raider series, were talking about how the reboot was the start of like a trilogy, I think they wanted to say. So there would be Tomb Raider, then Rise of the Tomb Raider, and now this third one, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So, I mean, whatever this game is, like, Tomb Raider's been amazing lately. The last couple of games, they've nailed it. So, it. Well, absolutely good. Yeah. Now, I guess the progression is something that we're seeing now. Like, in the original Tomb Raider reboot, Laura Croft was becoming kind of a bad... She was a regular girl going out, and then all of a sudden she's in this perilous situation, and she has to find that inner dragon. You know, she has to find yeah. the last dragon. Now, in Rise of the Tomb Raider, she's already fucking... <laughs> she's an animal, okay? She's breaking necks and jumping down from trees and she's stabbing people shit. and grabbing yeah. you and dragging you. I mean, she's really hardcore, so I'm guessing that that progression is going to continue, and she'll be like a shadow in the third game. Oh... Yeah. Who knows? I mean, it's wait. exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. I think that the Tomb Raider games are a shining example of how you reboot a franchise. Uh, I can't think of another franchise that's been rebooted to this type of a claim. That's just been a great experience. Look great. Play great. Good frame rate. Everything works well. Uh, even though I think the controls are a little bit drifty in Rise of the Tomb Raider. But uh, I think that uh, I'm looking forward to Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well. Yeah, Ryder, any thoughts on the Shadow? You're not safe anywhere, man. This dude was just taking the bus to work, and so he's snapping fucking pictures of his he's laptop. He's on the train. Yeah, this dude yeah. could get fired for this. God damn it! <laughs> what is with game industry people like just showing their unannounced projects? Yeah, they're working he's on, just it on assembly to get a train. He's trying to work done on the way to work. People are <laughs> like, oh, let me take a snapshot. Mind his own like, business, and doing a little work game. on his laptop. <laughs> some motherfucking some assholes pictures. like let me just take this and then <laughs> leak it on the internet yeah right yeah, yeah. Son of a bitch. Are... reddit man reddit assholes our second bit of news don't expect a new xbox to be released every two years after the xbox scorpio says phil spencer who went on to say quote i'm not trying to turn consoles into the graphics card market end quote so he's not done with that shit so the iterative campaign that's being pushed by sony and and microsoft for you know iterations on their consoles every two or three years phil says nah it's not going to happen every two or three years with the xbox after the scorpio you're going to have to keep it for a couple years four or five years what do you guys think about that 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 might be the case but i also believe that with you know because the console generations as we know it are just completely changing right now we got Xbox, who's basically, you know, trying to create this one unified generation, and you have PlayStation, who's trying to release multiple systems to extend a generation. 
And yeah, I mean, Phil's a smart guy. I definitely believe him. Are but, those, the same- but aren't those the exact same thing, just worded differently? I mean, if the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro are the same thing, Sony has no, you know, uh, revelations for a PS5 or anything, isn't that the same thing as Xbox One and Xbox Scorpio? Similar. Uh, Sony, I believe, their difference. language would indicate that they are still on board with the console generation. They are. They're just extending it, sort of they, like they're creating a mid-tier yeah, they, upgrade. They do. We can expect to see a PS5 out of yeah. Sony. Whereas Microsoft is like, we're just going to create a new <laughs> Xbox. That's all it is. Not like an Xbox Two or something. I, they'd never they're, call it that. They're going to continue with the the PC architecture and just continue to improve. Yeah. Yeah, as far as like every two years, I think he could be right on this. But at the same time, I think if people get more uh, adaptive of consoles releasing more often, I think it definitely could happen. Whereas if they make a lot of money off Scorpio, maybe they say we want to release this two years from now instead of you know four years or something. So I've heard could. a lot of blowback. Is what's going on? Is I've heard. I think they've heard people like you, Beastly, who have gotten upset about this, and I think rightly so. Is you know this is an expensive proposition. For a lot of people, if all of a sudden the the consoles get on this like cell phone like schedule where, you know, to stay up to date and to keep running the software as good as it can be, you've got to buy a console every two to three years. Like I don't know how that's accepting rough. That. That's rough. Yeah. And you know, and like you said, Beastly, you've argued this point fairly in the past, is that you lose that generational leap that you get from a PS3 to a PS4 or from a PS2 to a PS3. That's you, know, you lose that. And I think yep. that I think Sony has definitely seen that that argument out there that you've made, and I think they've responded responded to it by saying there will be a PS5. They haven't said it specifically, but they they, they do not want to get on that cell phone like plan. there will be a PlayStation. Microsoft, 5. I think, yeah, is more years. willing to do that, but they don't want to make you feel like if you buy an Xbox Scorpio on release day, then you're going to regret that decision two years from now. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's like well, you're not going to feel left out because you spent. You know, pre pop do- top dollar, because right now, if you bought an Xbox One on release day, like, let's be honest, we feel like chumps a little bit, right? I think it was five hundred dollars. Yeah, fucking do, Briar. Five hundred dollars. Yeah. I think it was five hundred dollars. It's it's worse hardware than you could get right now from Xbox for three hundred dollars. Yeah. And there's a new one coming out next year that's going to blow the one. By the connect, right? It you yeah. know so Microsoft's put a value proposition out there that has hurt me personally. Me too. And, you know, I think they've got to, they've got to figure out a way to create value for customers because right now they're not doing that. I'm excited for the Scorpio. Don't, don't get me wrong. Just having a really powerful home console really is appealing to me. But at the same time, the fact that I spent $500 on a console that, you know, is not as powerful as the one that they're now selling for $300 sucks. I, and yeah. I paid four hundred, and I'm like, shit. You can get it now for how much? Three hundred with a game, and it's better, and it has a better GPU, and all this stuff is so frustrating. But it is what it is. Sometimes my thought, my thoughts on the whole iterative uh, campaign for consoles is this: Briar, you remember the Nintendo, the NES when it came out? Yeah. How do you think it would have played out if the Super Nintendo only played up res Nintendo games? Sure, it would have been amazing for us. You said, wow, man, Mario 3 looks fucking amazing in 16-bit. It's just, it's incredible. Mm. But the true power of the Super Nintendo would have never been realized. Games like Donkey Kong Country would have never existed. And so that's my thought on the iterative campaign that Sony and Microsoft are doing with the Pro and with the Xbox Scorpio. It may look better, but it's still a last-generation title running on next-generation hardware, and you won't ever see that full potential. Now, I did do a video on But so is every PC game. Yeah, well, but that's, that's an excellent point, that's, though. PC. That's like, the that difference between really console point. and PC, though. Yeah, yeah you know? there's a there there are generational gaps in in consoles, whereas PCs it's just iterative. But mm-hmm. PCs, arguably, for the last fifteen years, have maintained a level of of graphical quality that's way higher than the consoles can achieve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact. It could be argued that consoles are holding PCs back because, <laughs> yeah, there's well, definitely when that Scorpio comes out. I don't know about that. That Scorpio is going to be up That's there, be man. as powerful as a 1080p or a 1080. 1080. It's going to be really, really, uh, it's going to be as powerful as the, the high end PCs out there. That it's thing's not, going to cost you don't think so? Six no. teraflops, it's not, that's not as powerful as a, 
a PC right now running a That's definitely a, a high-end PC. That's not the highest-end computer, though. I mean, for a game console, right? And like, it definitely... You don't need as much power as a PC for a console because you're not running as much, but... That's still pretty good for a home console. It's like, that is good. quite a bit of power. It's damn good. I, yeah. I think that they're actually narrowing that gap there with the Xbox Scorpio, for sure. They're narrowing between... the gap today, but where's where PC graphics cards going to be when that thing Next actually comes out? <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about this shit, okay? It's giving me a headache, goddammit. All it means for us is we're going to be spending more and more money. More yeah. and more money to keep up with the Joneses and keep up with the newest and the most amazing things. And we got to do it. It's just part of who we are. A lot of my friends, they spend their money on other shit. And then when I tell them I just spent $500 on a headset that's VR, they're like, man, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I say, what the fuck is wrong with you? VR is like a new thing, man. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I mean, we got PS4 Pro coming out in four days, too. Yeah. That's the other thing. That, are you excited? I really, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, mainly because I'm looking forward to the improvements it makes to Drive Club, to, to the VR games, right? Like, I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, good, because yeah, I'm, I'm going to need some in-depth analysis from you uh, from your VR experiences on the vanilla PS4 versus the Pro, and that'll definitely uh, weigh heavily on my decision on when I'm going to buy the Pro. I'm definitely going to buy it, but, you know, my wife's pregnant. I shouldn't have had sex. It fucked my life up, but... <laughs> She's pregnant, and so instead of buying games, I need to be buying cases of diapers and, you know, extra nipples. Beastly. Here's the problem. You should have had sex still. That's not the problem. You just... Oh, no, uh, I'll tell you what the problem is. You got all these come. kids running around. You got to put these fuckers to work. Bring you got that life. right. Start supporting <laughs> yourselves. You know, Get them to work. life ain't free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Got Boy, that. you got to work for your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, water is expensive. I think I want to have my son go outside with a bucket. That'll be his job to collect rainwater and boil that shit, mm-hmm. and then take a bath. All right, we're talking. Yeah, Maybe we can raise some chickens. Money. You know, yeah. that productivity. I, yeah. I don't know. I live in an apartment. They they might you have got a roof? some trouble with that. Yeah, just tell them they're pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't chickens. Those are pigeons. <laughs> And you're a racist. <laughs> and a sexist. What a horrible thing to say. <laughs> oh, Calling right, my so... chickens. Calling my bitches chickens. You motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> you racist asshole. You know about racist. birds, you human. All right, so. <laughs> you don't know about birds. You don't know shit about chickens. I mean, pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to get me evicted, Briar. All right. (laughs) Nintendo is reportedly ceasing production of the Wii U this week, according to sources directed from Eurogamer. Now, Robbie added our notes, and I don't know if in Canada they get news late, but as far as I know, this is all speculation, and Nintendo did come out and say that wasn't true. Have you heard differently, Robbie? Uh, Of course they're going to say it's not true. Did Nintendo say anything? Yeah, they did. They said it's not true, but of course they got to say that. Yeah. <laughs> no, please you know you... St- keep buying Wii U's. I swear to God, we're going to support that for the next five years. Absolutely. Yeah, like, oh yeah. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely not. Of course, yeah. we'll keep supporting. Are you crazy? Right, no. Yeah. No. We're not going <laughs> to. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, not a it's not our next console it's just oh. supplementary supplementary <laughs> it, it, it'll enhance your wii u experience you. it's to compliment it yes of course <laughs> we should just do nintendo's marketing man we would kill <laughs> absolutely yeah. kill i them. feel you know it's the trust that the consumer would have in us robbie that i really think would sell it yes <laughs> oh Three Definitely guys not getting rid of that. <laughs> so, so do you guys think it's wise for them to uh, end production of the Wii U now, or do you not think this part- soon? I'm surprised. Yeah, that- no, definitely stop production, but definitely don't tell anybody you're stopping production. You want to sell what's in retail now. You want to sell what's in the supply chain. Just okay. say, nah, now nah, we got games coming off the Wii U. Don't worry. You do not want to be fun. sitting on a bunch of those things, you know. Yeah, you know what? They should, they should, they should have a, an amazing Black Friday sale to get rid of their old stock. Just let them go with two games for two hundred bucks. I'm gonna be, Boom. I'm gonna keep my eye out on Black Friday for an Xbox One S. Mm. Well, I got a video coming out tomorrow on that, so make sure you tune in. Okay, there's some, some nice Xbox One and PS4 deals. 
Yeah. Uh, coming to your local GameStops and Best Buys. And that video will be live tomorrow. Nine videos I did yesterday. Yes, it was hard. I didn't see my wife and kids. That's cool. They're nuts. Done. Uh, let me put, quickly put in like, like I, <laughs> I mean, I would, you guys are jerks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would be really surprised if they already added production of the Wii U, right? Because didn't they say something about they would support it until 2018? Which, of course, I was like, probably not. But I'm surprised like they're already ending support before the Switch is out. You know, I would expect them to go at least like maybe a couple months after. The theory is there. some of the games that are coming out for the Switch are going to be compatible with both systems, right? Like the Zelda game is going to be compatible on both. I think the Pokemon mm. is rumored to be on. Uh, it's not going to be compatible because one's cartridge and one's disc. No, but, but I mean, it's it, like the uh, like the Wii U or the Wii the GameCube version of, of uh, Twilight Princess, right? It came out mm. on both. I, I suspect that's what we're going to see out of Nintendo. Nobody, nobody else is making Wii U cartridges, well, discs. You know, I, I think Nintendo's going to move over to the Switch because I think they know that the Wii U is a flop. They want to move on. They want to try and get something new building. I, I mean, I don't know what their numbers are. I don't know how many of these things they have in their supply chain right now. I don't know if they got warehouses full of these things because they expected to sell, you know, double what they did sell. My suspicion is that you want to you want to end production so that you're not once the Switch comes out, you're just not sitting on a ton of Wii U's. Yeah, you got to sell yeah, that supply that chain. That would make sense. Yeah. That, that, that makes a lot and of sense. And the thing's coming out in four months. Okay. How so many Wii U's do you think they're God, selling right I'm now? I'm so excited. That's, a, that's at least four within the next four months. Um, at least. <laughs> well, based on my, my back pain, like I, I think it's the, the game to have or the console to have if you do hurt your back. <laughs> Briar found a use for the Wii U. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Although I didn't oh, like how God. I constantly had to look down at the gamepad. <laughs> well, you know what, Briar? Nintendo, if you want to contact the Beastly Thought Show, uh, we can work something out where we can send Briar Rabbit to all the hospitals to push Nintendo Wii U's and explain <laughs> to people all the back pain this... wards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened? I broke my back. Try I this. See this Wii U. It, it's you not so much broken. It just got a little tweak back here. Just bugging me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. What else all we right, got? So the we got Call of Duty Infinite War Warfare players on PC will have split player bases depending on where they choose to purchase their game. Yeah, that was Me fucked. Yeah. Meaning Steam copies will have a completely separate uh, pool of players from those who purchase a physical copy or a copy from the Windows Store. Damn. How is that a thing? It's That's weird. I know. I couldn't believe it when I read it either. Yeah, that is super bizarre. So that means that if I bought my copy from you know, a retailer... And basically, you bought it on Steam. We can't play, not together. play together. Yep. Cat, I can't exactly of me. What it is. Cat. Oh, wow. It's a cute cat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh cute. Right. Throw fucking shit up in your office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of cats fucking shit up, right? Today, I was cutting my brother's hair in my bathroom, and I heard my wife scream, What the fuck are you doing? So I come around the corner, my cat Dexter. Barrel rolls through the living room, jumps up on the entertainment center, knocks my two terabyte hard drive down while it's inside the cradle and broke it. So, uh, no, yes, the cat's gotta go. You're right, but she won't, <laughs> she won't let me do it. Dexter, you fucker. I named you, I named you after right. a murder. Yeah. That's what happens, right? Dexter used to be one of my favorite shows. Yeah, I named this cat, he was born in this house. I named him after Dexter. And he murders my fucking electronics. <laughs> we got a like, cat named Walter this? after Walter White. I'm wondering what I got to look, <laughs> look forward to. <laughs> you, better, you better make sure that that's cat. cat this motherfucker's <laughs> outside the bedroom. I am the one who knocks. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Well, like, here's what you got to do. You got to either put that cat to work or you sell it. That's a solution. Oh, it'll, it'll be one, but I'm more worried about Walter, though. Make sure that he doesn't have bags of catnip that he's selling to the neighborhood Make cat. Make sure he's not sitting in his RV doing some uh, questionable things. Yeah. <laughs> you see a cat running so, around in some fucking underwear in the back of RV. That's yeah. one, of, one of the best shows ever. <laughs> and our last bit of news for tonight's episode of Beastly Thoughts. Phil Spencer has teased that some of the top requests for backwards compatibility are coming to the Xbox One this month. Robbie, you want to run down real quick what some of these uh, top requests are? So, 
I believe for a 360 title, the top five games are Skyrim, which probably not because the special edition of that just came out, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and Call of Duty 4. So like half of them are Call of Duty titles. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got the list here. Um, Black Ops 2, uh, The Elder, Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and COD 4. Wow. Yeah, three Jeez. of those Call of Duty titles will come over. Everything except COD 4, I think. I that's, bet actually, those are that's actually really – that's great news, especially for people who miss those old CODs and can't play them anymore because playing it on the new Xbox One infrastructure is going to remove all the hacks and cheats – People flying through the air, shooting lasers at you, you sure? dropping birds. Lasers? Hold it on. Should. This is infinite warfare. Why would, why would it do that? You wouldn't think. Do you think it's running on the same uh, infrastructure as the Xbox 360? Yeah, I think your yeah. Xbox yes, One is. is just emulating uh, Xbox 360. You're still playing against other players who have modded Xbox 360s that can make their characters fly around and shit. Hold I on. have something to say about this quick. You want to know something that proves that? Because World of War became backwards compatible on Xbox One, played it. Tons of hack lobbies. Oh, like, fuck change that. a thing. Don't so even care about that. Like, it definitely still happens. It's the same game. It's the same infrastructure. Like, it's all the same. You just, you can play it on Xbox One. It's not every that's, that's year, a and it's the same damn shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> See, that's disappointing. I would have thought that the new infrastructure would have been enacted to kind of get people a more streamlined nah, so you're just pretending your xbox one is just pretending to be a xbox 360 you fucking pretender That's exactly what it is. <laughs> you can't even do that shit right <laughs> Damn it. the other thing that people were speculating on is that this actually might be backwards compatibility for original xbox games that's what people oh, are also well. speculating because the original xbox just turned 15 years old that could ah. be another one well, Phil cool. Spencer, I did a video on that last week. He did say that's something that they're definitely looking at. He yeah. said it isn't, a, it isn't a top priority, but it's definitely something they've been looking at and speculating on. But what original Xbox games would you like to see on your Xbox One? Knights of the I, Old Republic. That's that was it. a good one. Yeah, That's a damn good choice. Um, that is I don't choice. really know. Was Jade Rabbit? Jade, or Jade, not Jade, Jade Rabbit. Empire. Jade, Jade, Jade Empire. Empire. That was a Jeez, good one. But you're thinking of Destiny. Destiny. Of course I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What about Crimson Skies? Was that original Xbox yeah. or was that 3? Yeah, it was. That, that game looks sick. I've never played it. That, that game was cool. fun. That game was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, look at us all. Pregnant yeah, I'm trying to think. Xbox That's Xbox a long Xbox. time ago now. I haven't played the original Xbox very much, so I don't really know too many uh, games I'd be interested in. But yeah, I'm trying to think. See, it, that lets us know right there. What did the Xbox actually mean besides Halo? What what games do we have besides KOTOR and Halo on the original Xbox? Blinks the time traveling cat? No. I want, <laughs> what was amazing on the Xbox? There was a lot guys, of really good games on Xbox. Okay, guys, let us know in the comment section below your five top original Xbox games, not Xbox One. Oh, damn it! What is that game called? I'm thinking of one. Uh, Try to remember, Robbie. You were in a you were in a. That dive. shit was a long ass time ago, Beastly. Shit! It was. It came out <laughs> 11 years ago now. Um, uh, you were in a diaper 11 years ago. Stranger's Wrath. That's what it is. That is. Oh, awesome that was game. a good one too. Yeah. Yeah. I think they remastered that though. I don't think you can play on an Xbox One though. I don't believe so. They remastered so that it for 360. No, it was PlayStation. I want to say, yeah, like. PS3 and Vita and PC. They definitely remastered I don't think it... that game at some point. But yeah, yeah, it might have been actually for the last generation that they remastered it. That was a good game. Yeah. You know, yeah, you guys make the most interesting faces when you're actually trying to remember. It's it's, it's really hard, awesome. man. It's, it's, it's heavy lifted over <laughs> you here. <see> Robbie, do, <laughs> do it again, Robbie. <laughs> Just looking towards the stars, you know. Well, oh, it might be out there. Oh, wait, it's just my bedroom roof. Never mind. What were those Kane, Legacy of Kane games? Legacy of Kane. Oh, those yeah, games were yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was those PlayStation. Were good. <clears throat> those came Soul out on Reaver. Both. Soul Reaver. Legacy of Kane came out on PS1. Yeah, Soul what? Reaver came out on both. Right? Soul Reaver was on both. Soul Reaver yeah. was great. That was fucking epic. Yes, it was. Yeah, that was a cool ass game. Did they ever make a Soul Reaver 2? I'm too little. I, I want to say, yeah. But it wasn't I, as I good, do. was it? Otherwise, I'd know about no. it. <clears throat> no. But damn, even Legacy of Kane was amazing, man. Very similar yeah, but Soul to... Reaver was dope. <laughs> yeah. 
for sure. For sure. Dope. A, Dope. He's he's got Walter White at home. Of course, he's going to use that term. Yeah, man. It's all about the dope life. <laughs> got blue on. meth coming out of my ears. Look at the Thank nuggets of this blue meth I got. <laughs> I, I want to uh, before we end the show, give a big shout out Ooh, to Fable. a good That's friend a good of mine. To which one? Fable. Fable. Oh yeah, mm, was, was yep, Fable? Yep. Fable was on the original Xbox, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, and then two, and all that came out on 360. I don't know, man. This stuff is so long ago; it's hard to remember. God, we were old as shit. But before we end the old show, I yeah. wanted to get to give a big shout out to the person who commissioned all our beastly thoughts art. It'll be up on all the videos from now on. Dan Baker, Dan Derry Baker is a good friend of mine, a great artist. Went to uh, uh, the Art Academy here in Atlanta for years. He's he's an old man, same age as I am. And he took his time and commissioned some really amazing pieces of art for our show. And we've all got our own individual art. And whether you guys decide to use it or not, it's up to you. But I wanted to give a big shout out to you, Dan. Thank you so much. You, you mean Dan. the world to us. And uh, you guys definitely check out the description for uh, Dan's Twitter if you're interested in what he can do for you and make your life beautiful. Thank you yeah. guys so much for, for tuning in to the Beastly Thought Show today. This is always the way I cap off my week. You know, it, the weekend is always great. But the Beastly Thoughts show, somehow, it cements the greatness of the weekend. And then after that, after that, I go to sleep and wake up to the same old shit. So, oh, oh. And, Reality and, hits you right back in the face yes, again. I'm really yeah, looking forward to it. Year, it's the same old yes, shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, next week's show uh, to hear from Briar about the PlayStation 4 Pro. He'll be the only yeah. person that I actually know this has having hands on with it. And I'm interested in you know, the little idiosyncrasies and, and differences and changes with this console and definitely whether or not you think it's worth it to pick it up if you already have a PS4. Uh, super spoiler excited. alert, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, but we probably would. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to playing some COD. COD. I, I haven't played COD 4 in forever. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, and Infinite Warfare is improved for the PS4 Pro. Yes, it That's is. True. Yep. That's true. There's wow. a lot of games. Titanfall 2 as well. Um, Play the campaign on uh, PS4 Pro. Wait till it comes out. That will be awesome. And COD 4 is being improved on PS4 Pro too. COD 4 you know is too? Well COD 4. Oh yep. my god. I know. <laughs> oh, it's 10 years old, but it's going to be one of the best looking so PS4 good. games. Oh my god. It's going to look oh. just as good as the PC version did back 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh. <laughs> all right i think that's gonna end it i'm reading the chat fable 2 is the only good fable life train that is false fable 1 was a good game gary diaz says uh panzer dragon orta was a good one for the xbox oh, yeah. panzer that dragon. was a good one yeah for sure for splinter sure. cell was good yep what was it night was it nights into dreams no that wasn't on xbox i'm sorry that you was a Sega. I don't, I don't know who you're talking. That, that was that was a Sega franchise where you're flying around this little guy at nights in the dream. Yeah, that game was. Let's not get into it. Some people loved it, okay, Briar. Everybody doesn't have the same fucking taste as you, okay? <laughs> Every episode, it's the same, same. old shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace. Bye. -bye.